Yo, what's going on guys? It's your man the Grass Ninja. We just coming off the heels of my first ever Cloud Ninja podcast. Shit was hype. Definitely uh, check out those dudes, Free Game, Mellow, Barra, everybody. I was on a video with them dudes, that's wild. Look, we're doing the Boruto Chapter 77 breakdown. A lot of crazy stuff came out of it, and uh, there's a lot of interesting ways we should probably think about this information, alright? Now, I'm gonna go over the main highlights of the chapter first. And then we'll just kind of break down those segments as we get to them. So, first major thing with Boruto is that Kawaki goes AWOL on his mission. And then he confronts Naruto in his house. Ends up capturing this dude. Sending him to another dimension or sealing him away or something like that, right? It's not really clear whether that's space-time ninjutsu or some sealing mechanic of his dojutsu or whatever. The other thing, Code is assembling an army of the Tentails creatures in the thousands so he's already amassed over a thousand of these ten-tailed monster things called grime claw claw grimes that's what it's called now code has these claw grime creatures in the thousands himawari's potential or her latent potential is shown off today and we might have seen a glimpse of daemon's hidden abilities all right so i actually want to start off with the himawari stuff and the daemon stuff because daemon senses some immense pressure coming off of himawari and he's able to track her location and find her immediately so he doesn't initially know it's himawari he just senses an immeasurable or not immeasurable an intense power and he goes after it because he's literally talking about how everyone in the village is weak there's no worthy combatants he's literally trash talking boruto naruto and sasuke and everybody saying you're all just garbage but then he senses like the latent potential within himawari and he's like you're a worthy adversary tries to start a fight with her but then realizes that she's not a fighter you know like he literally catches himself mid-strike and he doesn't attack her but he's also like smitten or like just dis like distracted by her you know there's some weird aura that she's giving off that Damon seems to be like intrigued by right he doesn't understand what this intensity is so he might have some hidden ability or whatever that allows him to sense people's relative power to like to his own or whatever and he thinks Himawari's latent potential is worthy of his hands right like literally he just destroyed Kawaki and Boruto like it was nothing he like let me show you guys uh, how strong I am and then he just destroyed them easily right but then he sees so much power in Himawari that he's like I want to fight you because this could be interesting so I'm really wondering how strong Himawari is supposed to be by the end of all this like you know we were talking about on the podcast like is like Himawari in the time skip supposed to be like a relevant character or whatnot and how strong is she for real and then I'm also wondering because Boruto points out sometimes Himawari like flips the switch and she can get really scary and that can be super powerful we saw Himawari flip the switch and one shot Naruto and Kurama like her her gentle fist punctured through both of their chakra systems you know so Damon's not wrong to be sensing like immense power coming off of her and I'm wondering if they're gonna play with some kind of bipolar character element with Himawari where like on one side of Himawari, she is just this like innocent little girl, Naruto's perfect daughter or whatever. But on the other side, when you push her over the edge, this other personality takes over that can like, you know, activate the Byakugan and like one shot people like Naruto, you know? So I'm thinking um, Himawari is being set up for something great in the future. I just don't know what it's going to be yet. And I also wonder if Damon might have some sort of attraction or some kind of crush on Himawari because he seems to be more intrigued by this intensity than just her latent power, right? Because on surface level, she doesn't look strong, right? But he's interested in her. So I'm wondering if that's going to be a thing. Now, Code and his Tentails creatures are actually wild, too. Because Code has amassed an army in the thousands, over the thousands. And he has some sort of storage pocket dimension that he's housing them in, as well as the ones that are just kind of mingling around in the uh, Tentails dimension. And he's continuously multiplying them, by the way. So he's got Tentails wrapped up in claw marks, and he's just... It's crushing and squeezing out all of these uh, claw grime monsters that they're calling them. So, Code can't attack Konoha yet, 
but according to Borto's visions of the future, we've got multiple shinobi in action, Team 10 is fighting somebody, Sarada and Mitsuki are on the move, we know Kawaki's up to something, right? The Hokage is not in the village, and there's possibly an invasion of Tenzel's soldiers on the way, and an invasion in the thousands. And we were talking about this on the podcast. How strong are these things supposed to be, right? Because, like, are they going to be, like, white Zetsu fodder? Or is it going to be, like, one of these little foot soldiers is enough to take out people like Konohamaru? Or it's going to take, like, it would have took Sasuke to take one down. Like, how strong are these going to be? Like, is Sarada going to be any help in this fight against thousands of Tentails foot soldiers? Or is she just too weak to hang right now? That's what I'm really wondering. Like, is Konoha's under threat? And then Kawaki goes ahead and captures and steals the Hokage. So now Konoha's under threat from an army of thousands of ten-tailed creatures, and their Hokage's been captured. So Kawaki, I'm going to go in-depth on his motivation and everything in a separate video, but for the most part, he kind of doubles down on like his ideology of like you know hating the Otsutsuki, and he takes it to the point where he's going to eradicate every single one of them, including Boruto, right? Now this rationale... I kind of rock with it, right? Because Kawaki's coming from the perspective of, like, not being a ninja, right? He wasn't raised a ninja. He was beaten up by the Otsutsuki this whole life. He became powerful enough and acquired their powers. And now he's going to use their powers to not only destroy them all, but control the world at this point, you know? Because he's like, look, Naruto, you are incapable of doing what needs to be done, and I'm going to do it for you. And whether or not you like it or not, you know, it has to be done. So if you want to kill me after I'm done handling my Otsutsuki eradication, then you can try to kill me afterwards. And the only reason why that's so insane is because Boruto's an Otsutsuki, and he has to kill him. Like, he feels like he failed his mission when he, he found out Boruto was alive. He feels guilty for failing, bro. So my dude and his emotional uh, fortitude and everything, everything he's going through emotionally right now, I'm wondering if that might actually play a part on his Otsutsuki genetics and his Otsutsuki biology, right? I made a video where we talked about the Curse of Hatred and how it might not be exclusive to the Uchiha clan since Indra Otsutsuki was the first person to ever inherit it or adopt this ideology because the Curse of Hatred is simply an ideology much like the Will of Fire. It's not an actual curse, but when the Otsutsuki body lives this lifestyle, it could yield, like, power-ups and transformations and results. So I'm wondering if Kwaki and his emotional, his heightened emotional state might have something to do with his Otsutsuki biology, you know? Because even Kawaki's like, it surprises me how overwhelmingly powerful my feelings for Naruto are. So he's like, look, I have to save you. And the Otsutsuki are a world wide threat it's not just this planet there's others right we just learned about one in a higher dimension so kawaki's got something going on and ida is there watching you know as kawaki is exhibiting all of this and kawaki is talking to naruto out loud about his plan to eradicate all the otsutsuki so i'm wondering if next chapter right since naruto's gone himawari is on the way to the house right so if himawari gets to the house is she going to confront kawaki the other thing naruto's gone is Sasuke going to be able to sense Naruto's chakra presence being, like, removed from the dimension or whatever? Like, is Sasuke going to have something go off? Like how when Momoshiki started flexing his presence, something went off within Sasuke. He could kind of recognize that. I'm wondering if we should look out for Sasuke next chapter. The other thing, Coats, Ten Tails, Army, how soon is that invasion happening? And how does he know Konoha has Ida and everything? And the last thing with Ida... Ida's watching everything with the Senrigan, and we know she wants Kawaki uh, to like her. If that, if Kawaki takes out Naruto like he just did, right, and then he decides to like kill Boruto, could Ida manipulate the populace of Konoha into liking Kawaki, right? Because she's walking around shopping, she's just creating a bunch of different love slaves everywhere she goes. So she's stealing the loyalty of the Konoha citizens from Naruto, and it's kind of just being forced on her. And if she decides everybody is okay with Kawaki, then everybody's just going to be okay with Kawaki despite what he did to Boruto or Naruto. And this could be like a slow takeover of Konoha from within. And if Amado does have command codes on Kawaki, I'm really wondering if his master plan is just to slowly take control of the strongest village 
and then just like puppet it from within, right? I definitely want to see some more political game coming out of Naruto and Boruto's story. And for everyone who feels like, hey, we're moving really far away from the whole ninja stuff, I'm trying to tell you, read Kawaki's dialogue. He literally says, ninjas are just people who die early deaths. There's no point to you guys, bro. So the age of Shinobi is over. Literally, I feel like we're heading towards the time skip. The chapter's name was a time drawing near. So literally, they're playing with the idea of like the future and everything uh, blowing up. So I'm definitely getting like Valley of the End vibes with like the end of part one Naruto, Sasuke's retrieval arc, and like Sasuke versus Naruto. I'm getting a lot of vibes because Kawaki has definitely changed the tone. There's a whole new atmosphere and a whole new energy out of the manga. If we do go into a time skip, instead of Boruto Shippuden, we might just call it Kawaki. So let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments section below. I've been your man's the Grass Ninja. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Peace.